Liverpool ended their three-match winless streak with a crucial 3-1 victory against Fulham at Craven Cottage. The win brought them level on points with Arsenal and one point above Manchester City who have a game in hand in the Premier League. Jurgen Klopp made six changes to the team that started against Crystal Palace a week ago, the most he's ever made between two Premier League games. Alexander Arnold, who made his first start since early February, replaced Connor Bradley with Kwanzaa coming in for Konate in the defense. In midfield, Gravenberch started over McAllister, who finally got some rest, and Curtis Jones was also dropped from the lineup leaving Endo as the only midfielder to retain his place. In the attack, Gakpo and Jota came in for Salah and Nunes, who were both relegated to the bench. The match started with a bang for Liverpool, and Jurgen Klopp's side should have been two goals up within the first few minutes. However, as has been their habit lately, Liverpool's men in attack wasted easy chances and allowed Fulham to stay alive in the match. But up stepped Trent Alexander-Arnold on 32 minutes with a special free kick from the left-hand side just outside the D. There was a similar free kick given just moments earlier from the opposite side, where Harvey Elliott made a very tame attempt, which left us baffled as to why Trent hadn't taken that one. Harvey Elliott who had received a lot of stick from Fulham fans for his connection with the club at youth levels, did okay in the match but often made the wrong decisions when it mattered most. But what a return it was for Alexander-Arnold, who seems to have regained his arrogance and swagger. The 25-year-old's return to the Liverpool team has the potential to significantly bolster the club's title-winning prospects with his skill set, experience and influence poised to contribute to the team's success in a multitude of ways. He has been speaking a lot in the media lately and has been choosing his words very wisely. I think he knows what he's doing. He definitely wants to win this Premier League for Jurgen Klopp. He understands that it is out of Liverpool's hands right now and he can only rely on the teams ahead to drop points but on the pitch, he demonstrates why he's truly a world-class player. Just as the match started against Fulham, he whipped in an unbelievable cross, which Luis Diaz headed just centimeters wide of the post. He put in a man-of-the-match performance and showed just why Liverpool had been missing him. It's very hard to say where he played. He basically just patrolled the area between the defense and midfield like a quarterback looking for runs and dictating the tempo of the game. His touches are calm and classy, and he's the one player in the Liverpool team who can create something out of nothing, leaving you in awe when he does it. He is that one that can deliver those Kevin De Bruyne-type passes and crosses into the box. Liverpool were actually flying without Trent for a decent period. Joe Gomez and Bradley both stepped up to the plate and Alexis McAllister became the team's creator. For a good month or so, the Argentine was their best player, always on the ball, providing big moments and showing a combination of bite and elegance in a probing midfield role. The number 10 was best with Wataru Endo, deployed as a number 6 beside him, giving him more creative license. Now the question is how Klopp will use Trent and Mack together. Against Atalanta last week, it simply didn't work. Trent ran out of gas and Maka was surprisingly negative, playing more passes to Alisson than to any other teammate. Although we can't forgive him for playing 90 minutes in almost all of the last 15 matches. Endo is key though. Use the Japanese as a sitter, put Mack as the number 8, and let Trent step in next to Endo when we have the ball. Like Kara says, Trent has the most freedom, and Endo provides him that, as he does for Mac Allister too. These three players are utterly crucial if Liverpool are to win our remaining five games and give ourselves a chance of winning the title. Even with five wins, Liverpool are still not favourites. 
considering they probably need Manchester City to lose a game and Arsenal to also drop points given the respective goal differences. But Trent is the key. He's not worn out from a long season given he's missed a third of it. He's hungry and playing with responsibility. He wants to inspire them to glory and he's at the right age now where he can do just that. He needs scrappers and fighters around him so that he can pull the strings. Obviously, the forwards need to take their chances and Salah and Nunez need to get themselves back in the goals. But Trent starting every game makes five wins a possibility. Another observation from the game is that Cody Gakpo appears much sharper in recent performances. While he may not be scoring many goals or providing numerous assists, since the FA Cup loss at Old Trafford, he seems to have regained confidence in his game. This is crucial as he can be a useful and effective option off the bench. Additionally, Gravenberg deserves a mention. He replaced Maka in the midfield and took advantage of the opportunity by scoring a wonderful goal in the second half to put Liverpool ahead. Although he hasn't fully convinced Liverpool fans yet, his age, combined with this performance, provides encouragement that he can develop into a key player in the seasons to come. In the pre-match press conference before the Atalanta game, Jurgen Klopp seemed despondent and disinterested, which are words you would never normally use to describe the German. However, after 85 minutes had passed at the Guis Stadium, Klopp could be seen smiling, and he carried that mood into the Fulham game. This is when Jurgen Klopp is at his best, when he smiles, enjoys the press conferences, and overall brings a positive atmosphere around him. This often translates to the players and then to the fans creating a connected feeling throughout the club. He and the players need to maintain this positive momentum for the remaining six fixtures. In a tricky away game at a crucial stage of the season, they were able to maintain their levels, retake the lead, and comfortably see out the game. Recently, it has felt like every Liverpool game has had some drama, but here there was none. This is another aspect Klopp will be delighted with, and I'm sure he would love it if Wednesday's Merseyside derby goes the same way. There are five matches remaining for Liverpool, five matches left in the Jurgen Klopp era. These are being termed as five finals, and we believe that if Liverpool can maintain the same attitude, focus, and with the returning world-class stars leading the charge, they can win all these remaining games. With tricky fixtures for both City and Arsenal, anything is possible. What are your thoughts on the match against Fulham? Do you believe Liverpool are back to their best? And will they win their remaining five games? Let us know in the comments. And as always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more Liverpool and Premier League discussions.